to refresh my memory a little bit about the central limit theorem. And um, I thought maybe you would like this. So the central limit theorem states it has something to do with you can take samples from a population which you may not know anything about that may not be normal. And if you take the distribution of the sample mean, um, it'll be normally distributed. Now that's a weird thing, so let's just read it real quick. And um, here's what it says. When independent random variables are added, their properly normalized sum tends toward a central distribution, uh, normal distribution. For example, suppose that a sample is obtained containing a large number of observations, each observation being randomly generated in a way, uh, and that the arithmetic average of the observed values is computed. If the procedure is performed many times, the central limit theorem says the computed values of the average will be distributed according to a normal distribution. The computed values of the average. And that's the key thing. So the real thing we need to do here is say, I've created a population distribution. It's a, a random uniform distribution. I have oh, 10,000 elements and you can see that when you plot it, it's, it's a uniform distribution that, that goes from negative 20 to 20. And um, you know, it's pretty evenly distributed, uniformly distributed. So really, the, the stupid thing to do would be to take just random samples from S and S has a shape. It should just be, you know, 10,000 by nothing, right? So, and you can see, you know, if you want to look at some elements, right, you can, um, they're just, you know, uniformly distributed numbers. So if you wanted to take um, random choices from S, and you want to say you want a hundred of them. Now, if, if you plot, if you plot that, I mean, this should continue looking uniform, right? Let's even go up a little higher. And some people, I think they get confused with what the central limit theorem says. They think it, it's not just taking samples from the parent distribution. Chances are, well, you're statistically guaranteed that if you do that, then uh, it'll just resemble the parent distribution. So that's kind of dumb. What you need to do is for a range of values, you want to take a sample. So let's take a sample of 20 each time. So I'm going to say uh, samples. I'm going to use a list comprehension here. Uh, random choices SK equals 20 for nothing in range. You know, let's take 100. And what we want to do here is this is going to be a sample of 20 from the population distribution. We really want the mean if we're going by the Wikipedia definition, which says the computed values of the average will be distributed according to a normal distribution. So if we jump back into this, so I'm getting my samples, I'm getting the mean of a choice of 20 100 times. And um, so I should have uh, an array of 100 numbers here. And if we actually plot plot the histogram of samples. Uh-huh, that's actually starting to sort of look like a normal distribution. So what if we, what if we stick with 100, but we increase the amount that we're sampling? Let's have a 50% increase there. That looks normally distributed to me. Let's go up to 50 and we'll still just do it 100 times. All right, let's do 100 each sample, do it 100 times. Okay, so maybe, you know, let's go back down to 20 and let's increase the number of samples that we take, maybe 500. Aha, uh -huh, now that's starting to look uh, quite normally distributed. 
So that's um, that's interesting. Um, let's do it for a thousand. Very interesting. So let's change the distribution to something else. Um, let's use the random. There are a lot of different distributions here. Random, gamma. Let's let's figure out how to work with the random gamma real quick. Shape scale. Let me just find an example here. All right. So shape and scale, and I don't really know much about the uh, the, the gamma distribution. We're gonna see what it looks like though. Okay, so that, let's add more just to really make it super gamma. So that's the gamma distribution. And I'm just gonna print the mean of S, 3.9. That makes sense. So now that we have a different underlying distribution, let's verify that our sampling distribution is actually still normal. And that is true. And I just want to, you know, highlight that the interesting thing here is that the distribution of, you know, the sampling distribution here as we sort of try to take advantage of the central limit theorem, uh, the, the mean or the the, the distribution tends to, you know, what do we have here? 3.98? Yeah, so the average does appear to be here at 3.98. And I think that is the, um, that is kind of the remarkable thing uh, about this all. And, you know, you can do a lot with very small sample sizes without having immense knowledge about the, uh, the parent distribution. And this is kind of the mechanical way to come up with verification that if you actually do what this says, the arithmetic average of the observed values, the computed values of the average will be distributed according to a normal distribution. So it's, um, you know, there are a lot of other things there, but hopefully in case you were trying to get your head around how the hell does this actually work, this was a relatively straightforward way to do it by uh, by Python and um, NumPy. So yeah, hopefully that helps somebody. I thought it was an interesting way to revisit the idea.